Hello, everybody. Welcome to the iSystem webinar about uh, Vector Microsar. This week, um, it's the second uh, in a row. Last week, we had a webinar about um, non-instrumented uh, timing analysis within uh, Vector Microsar. Today, we will do the other way around with instrumentation, because sometimes a microcontroller doesn't provide the necessary interface to do hardware tracing. And uh, today we will go more in details how this can be done with instrumentation. Your host today, um, my name is Errol. I'm your moderator. I'm taking your questions and uh, try to answer them on the fly, or we ask Felix at the end of the webinar to, ask, uh, to answer the questions, um, or a couple of them. So, as I said, Felix Martin is the speaker of today's webinar. Um, he's a systems engineer located in um, Michigan, USA, in our US office. And uh, he is one of our timing experts. And I'm sure you will enjoy his speech today. Some housekeeping. Mm. You are all muted uh, during the webinar. Questions uh, can be typed in using your keyboard um, at, uh, you, in the, using the question tab in the control panel of GoToWebinar. And um, the hands out are already uploaded. We will record this webinar again and host it after, or so tonight or tomorrow afternoon, better uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, as I said, I will take three to four questions after the webinar to ask Felix to answer them and the rest will be uh, answered by email. Please be sure to uh, control your audio settings uh, also from your PC. Um, if, uh, if you have troubles, uh, you can click the, the speaker symbol, left click, and uh, then you can also uh, adjust and be sure that you have uh, speakers on your headset. So, I think that's it, Felix. We can start. Let me see, give you the control. All right, thank you for the nice introduction. So yeah, today we are going to talk about how to record OS and RTE traces with instrumentation. So why would you want to use instrumentation? Well, not all microcontrollers do have powerful trace interfaces. So sometimes we have to make a compromise. And in that case, uh, we use a little bit of instrumentation and it's kind of a trade-off. So the idea is you will be able to record thread and thread is an umbrella term for task in ISRs. You will um, be able to record a thread state trace with DaVinci Configurator. You will use, you will be able to do runnable profiling via so-called RTE virtual function bus tracing. You will be able to use the iSystem trace configuration helper itchy to avoid a lot of manual configuration. You will see how that is really helpful. And then eventually you will be able to analyze, optimize improve the real-time behavior and the runtime behavior of your application. So some remarks. As I said, this is for Vector Microsa operating system and RTE with instrumentation. So for microcontrollers that do not have a powerful trace interface like RJ50 with only software trays, S32K or Travio 2, so Cortex-M based devices with WDWT, a data watch trace over SWT, which stands for single wire trace. So single wire, not a lot of bandwidth, might be overwhelmed by a regular full trace. That's why we want to use instrumentation and therefore it's less stressful for the trace interface or our power PC with ownership trace messages. So uh, this is what we are focusing on. Uh, we assume some famili familiarity with auto source profiling and tracing. If you're not familiar with those concepts, please watch the according to respective webinars. And finally, the idea is really to walk through the steps 
in a lot of detail. So it's not about explaining in a lot of detail what the data can be used for. We assume you know why you want to record this data. It's more about showing the different configuration steps. So we started with a little introduction that was already part of the introduction. Then we will look at thread state profiling with the, via the timing hooks with data trace, then via RG50 software trace, and then we look at runnable profiling, profiling via the RTE virtual function bus trace hooks, and then there will be a little conclusion at the end. Just a really quick reminder, this is what we are looking for. We want to record runnable event, runnable events such as runnable entries and exits, task states. The task states are really important because they give us further insights for our timing analysis. And then of course, ISRs are also important for the timing analysis. For each of the three use cases, we will discuss the requirements, the necessary configuration steps, and the outcome. And again, the idea is really to show those configuration steps in detail. Also, there is some compiling and code generation required to make this these use cases work. So I will not uh, show you how to do that uh, for time reasons. And uh, I assume that you're familiar with your DaVinci configurator uh, environment. And uh, if you're not, then Vector will be glad to assist you. Okay, let's get started with the first use case. So let's talk a little bit how can what 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 does instrumentation mean again and why do we want to utilize it and how do we do that so there's another webinar about vector microsoft profiling without instrumentation and if you've watched that met, uh, webinar you will know that task state tracing is feasible but you need a lot of data trace comparators you need a lot of trace bandwidth that's not feasible on all microcontroller architectures so in that case, we can use instrumentation as a compromise. Like we add a little bit of overhead to the application, but uh, that overhead is still much smaller compared to if we were using pure software trace. So in order to add that instrumentation, DaVinci Configurator and Mac Microsoft provides, provides a feature called OS timing hooks. So the first step is to activate those OS timing hooks in DaVinci Configurator and regenerate the OS. Then, that's the first step here. Then the next step is we need to create a so-called iSystem Profiler XML file to make Itchy aware of the instrumentation that we are using. We also, of course, have to provide the implementation for the timing hooks. And as you can see here, we include our S timing hooks header file that includes the instrumentation and I will show you how that instrumentation file looks like, of course. So once we have done that, we have implemented the instrumentation and we have uh, created this profile XML file. We add the profile XML file to WinIdea. We load uh, the new binary, of course, the new download files with, that includes the instrumentation. And then uh, we can record a trace and get the thread states. And of course, I don't know if I mentioned that we have to rebuild uh, after we added the instrumentation. So let's look, take a look how that looks uh, in WinIdea and how to do that configuration. So this is my workspace for today. I have some shortcuts. Here's my itchy directory. If you don't have itchy yet, um, it's a uh, part of uh, WinIdea. It's under WinIdea scripts itchy. If you don't have it here, then you need a newer version. In my case, I'm using uh, 56 here, 156. Um, that's not where I wanted to go. Let's go back to webinar. Here we are. And I also have a little Microsoft application here. I've just copied the most important files, but I also have the link to the application directory here. We will look uh, at some of the files that are required here later. So let's get started. Let's first switch into itchy and let's open a PowerShell here. And then uh, the first thing you can do is just run it and make sure that the executable works fine. It should show us the, the help. Okay, that's good. 
So then uh, the next step, if you don't have a configuration yet, and as you can see, um, to, to avoid uh, errors, I have prepared a configuration here. Uh, if you don't have a configuration yet, you can use the right default config setting and, and itchy will write a default configuration for you. In my case here, it yells at me because the configuration already exists. And one important thing to mention, by default, itchy will use that configuration file named itchy.json. If you want to specify another configuration file, you will have to use this config flag and then point it to where itchy.json is located. So I actually messed that up in another webinar and that I got an exception because I pointed itchy pointed to the wrong JSON file. So just be aware of that. In my case, I will just use this itchy.json file today for this presentation. So I don't have to um, I don't have to use the config flag. So let's look how this file looks like. And there are basically two parts, and let, let's skip the runnable instrumentation part for now. So what you need is you need uh, to point itchy to the ORTI file, and we will see how you can generate the ORTI file in a second. You need to specify a profile XML file. I always recommend having the profile XML and the itchy.json file in the same directory. It just avoids some issues. And then there's also a task state instrumentation attribute and there are two sub attributes here task mapping file in the past we used a so-called os types lcfg.h file to get this red map mapping that's no longer required so you can just leave that empty or remove the attribute if you don't have a orti file for some reason you can still use that os types lcfg file uh, by adding it here so that's feasible I recommend, since you need the ORTI file anyway, in most cases, uh, just leave that empty here. And then template directory. If template directory is specified, so you could leave it empty like that, but if it is specified, it will, it she will create a default implementation for the instrumentation files. And so by, in this case, I just pointed to the current directory. And as we will see in a second, that will have the result that um, it she writes a header and a C file into our directory and we can adapt the instrumentation for our needs. So, but first things first, let's start uh, by going into DaVinci Configurator and I can see that my configurator is here. So, we need to activate two things now. First thing is under Runtime System General, OS debugging. We want to do. We want to make two changes here. First, we want to add the ORTI file. ORTI 2.3 standard or additional was fine. In my case, I have additional. So that's for the ORTI support. And if you have uh, ever used uh, done profiling without instrumentation, you are from already familiar with that setting. And then the second option that we need to do is we need to activate the OS timing hooks. And that's what we do here. So you can say in my case, I have already added it. If you don't have it yet, you add it. And make sure that you specify OS underscore timing hooks underscore system.h. Um, if you want to use a different name, then you have to make sure that you adapt the naming of the instrumentation files later. And then we go ahead and uh, regenerate the OS. So that would be fine. And I'm not going to do that right now for time reasons, but we regenerate US. Okay. And then we can get rid of the DaVinci configurator for now. And then the next step is to actually go ahead and run Itchy. So I need my PowerShell again. Here we are. And then I'm going to run Itchy. And in this case, I want to record the task states. In my case, it's actually the thread states. And the reason why I call it thread states is that the threads include the task and the ISRs. This is just how Vector has implemented their hooks. They have one set of hooks that include both the information for tasks and ISRs. So the better command would be thread state instrumentation 
but it's I just call it task state instrumentation in the beginning, and that's why it is called like that. I hope I haven't made a spelling error here, and I hope I don't get an exception in my face. And oh, it looked like it worked fine. So what we got now is um, if we go to this directory here, you can see that um, we have a profiler XML file. So that's good. We wanted to generate that. And then Itchy has also created the OS timing hooks.h and .c file. And so let's look into the .h file to quickly discuss that. Um, so the hooks consist, there are three hooks, OS uh, VTH schedule, activation, set event. And you can see there's an implementation for each of uh, those uh, hooks and as you and, and the way that it works is that we take a couple of information here we have some masks and do some shifting and then we write the result into the i system trace where variable and we do this for all three hooks and the advantage of this approach is yeah we sacrifice some instructions here but still this is uh, not a function call this is a macro so it gets inlined into the code so we sacrifice some instructions and then write the information into the iSystem trace variable. But then by tracing this single variable, we actually get all the information we need. In this case, I have a six core system, second generation Oryx with six cores. And all I have to do to get all the information is trace a single variable. Okay, so that's really good. So I have the header file that uh, does the uh, implementation of the hook. Hooks and then um, I also have a C file that implements the, the, the not that implements that it defines the trace variable. And in my case here, I have used a macro, a compiler or a linker macro rather to map. Well, it's a compiler macro, and then the linker maps this variable into this memory address. And that's uh, on the Oryx, that's the global non-cached LMU RAM. And the reason why I have to map it into that RAM is so that all write accesses from all cores actually go over the system resource interconnect. And that enables me to record all data write accesses from all the cores. If you use a different microcontroller or want a different address, you can also, of course, just remove that and let the linker decide wherever it wants to allocate this variable to. But of course, it's important now that we add both the header file as well as the OS timing hooks.c file into uh, the vector application. So if I go here into my project, I can first show you. I think this is where I know that's not the file that I'm looking for. Let's see here. So you can see that I have added the C file to the um, make file. Well, you can you you can add it to whatever make file um, you want to. So just just add it uh, wherever you want to add it. And then if we go into generate data, let me see. I don't know where I actually have it edited. Open file location. Yeah, then you can see in Gen Data, I have actually added this header file as well as the C file. And then now I would recompile. And if the hooks are not properly implemented somewhere, then I would get a exception when linking or even when compiling anyway. OK, so you have to add those files. And since I already have the profile XML, now I can go into WinIdea. So here's my win idea, and the first step is to add the profile XML file. So I go to new Prozac Autosa. We're using Microsa here. I add the system profile XML, and I add the XML that I've just generated. Okay. So I click OK, and then let's do a load symbols to make sure that the Changes are active. And now I open the analyzer by going to view, to view analyzer. And I create a new configuration. 
let's call it thread state profiling. And I, so now in theory, we just have a single global variable that needs to be traced. And then you should be able to figure out uh, how to trace that variable. So we can try to do an automatic configuration here. And then we just make sure that code is not selected and we also don't have network trace. And then if we click here, um, it shows the threads. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. That's good. And now if we start a trace and then start the target, we can see that we indeed, we recorded something, but uh, there are two pitfalls here or two problems. First, our trace is very short. And then second, if you pay attention, you can see that they're only tasks for core zero. And I will show you why that is uh, in a second. So if we go here and look at the configuration, the first thing is I have to activate upload by sampling to make sure that I can record for a longer duration. I don't need timer interpolation, but then if you look at the manual trigger configuration, the problem is the following. Winner here by default uses a processor, and this is Oryx specific, but since a lot of customers use Oryx, and it's, since it's also helpful for the configuration other architectures, I just explain it in detail. So by default, Winner here just uses the processor observation block for CPU zero to record that variable, the iSystem trace variable. In other words, we only get accesses from that core, and that's not what we want. What we want instead is we want to trace all accesses to that LMU memory. And then I also want to use ticks for timestamps. Uh, that's just my personal preference. So I enable the ticks here quickly. And then I go to SRI tracing, and this is where I can now select the uh, system trace variable. Okay. That's what I want to trace, entire object. I have to map it to an event. And then I say, okay, whenever a write to this variable occurs, I record the address and the date, uh, the datum, the value that has been written, okay? And now, because we are tracing over the bus observation block of over the SRI bus observation block, we should get the accesses from all the cores. So let's do another try here. You can just go ahead and start the recording. And you can see two differences now. Firstly, uh, our timestamps are still incrementing here. So we're still recording. That's good. And then also, um, and I can stop at some point so that we don't get too much data. And then also you can see that um and you can see it's, it's still loading here so i've actually i uh, know it's finished and you can see i have many more thread objects here if i remove that i would have even more so i i have the filter applied show so that i don't see areas with no activity and then you can see that i actually have threads for all of my six cores so now one thing that you will notice is by design, all the threads are shown under the same node. They are actually profiled for their individual cores. Unfortunately, in, that ver in this version of Winnet, there's, there's not yet a nice way to sort this. So I kind of have to manually track and drop and work here if I want to analyze a specific thread. Okay, this is just how it is at the moment. But the good thing is if I um, zoom in here to a thread, for example, I can uh, expand that and then you can actually see, okay, I have the full state model here. This is an extended task, gets activated, switches into the new state. Uh, sorry, this is a basic task. It's in the terminated state, goes into new, running. It's preempted here, probably by some ISR somewhere. And then it uh, goes back into running and terminates, okay? You can see that there is the snow thread core um, zero to five. Don't worry about this. So this snow thread actually is there because we are writing in the iSystem trace variable twice. So there is a short gap when there's actually no running task. And uh, this is when we, this is why we get uh, this little gaps here. So that's basically whenever there's a task switch, uh, we don't have to worry about that. But yeah, now we can um, also look at the statistics and uh, we could, for example, look at the 
at the background task or um, I think on the other course they're called idle task and you, you can see that um, uh, by the, like the, the background task for example course zero has a load of 3.76 seconds sorry it has a time of 3.76 seconds that um, equals 24 percent if we divide it by those 15 seconds total execution time and then by doing calculating 100 percent minus that 24 percent we can uh, calculate the actual load uh, which would be around 76 percent okay so that's the first use case now let's go back to our presentation here where is my presentation here it is and let's do a short wrap up for this use case um, we only used uh, the first uh, the task state instrumentation setting in itchy we can leave both settings empty if we want to if we if you need help with the hook implementation which you probably need when you do it the first time make sure that you enter a directory here uh, if you do the dot slash then it's the current directory um, we executed the instrumentation or we uh, executed itchy to generate the instrumentation files and to generate the profile xml and we added those files to the build process and then we were able to recall a thread state trace so now what happens if you want to use rj50 software trace instead and there are two changes you have to make at first so let's first talk about what software trace is here you have an implementation of a rj50 software trace function and it's an assembly function and so you can see it there are two instructions the first instruction moves the value into register 10 and then there's a special instruction called db push that pushes the value r10 into a dedicated trace message so db push creates a trace message that contains the information that um, register 10 was used as well as the value of register 10 and then uh, that trace messages gets um, sent off chip via rj50 software trace automatically so the first thing we have to do is we have to adapt our hook implementation so that it uses this isystem profile thread function and then we also have to make sure that this uh, function is being executed okay so that's step one and I have already or like this instrumentation is already part of the hook files that we have just generated so we just have to comment and uncomment uh, some sections of that of that hook file and then recompile the second step is we have to make the profiler xml and WinIDly aware that we are now using this different type of instrumentation so instead of using the isystem trace variable we comment that out so this is the xml syntax for making a comment so we comment that line out and then instead we tell uh, the profiler okay now our instrumentation works via the db push message from register 10. okay so those are the two changes we have to make and then we just uh, recompile reload the profiler xml file and then uh, we can record the same trace just this time based on rj50 software trace okay so i will show you how to make those changes i don't have an rj50 target available here right now for the demo so i, I show you how to do the settings uh, but i won't like we won't uh, record an example trace so first we go to the header file and if i scroll down here you can see there is an implementation of the um, profile thread function so let's add that here so that would be step one and then the second step is we simply include uh, include this uh, the, the, the hook implementation and you can see it now uses this isystem profile thread marker okay and then of course we would have to write um, that didn't work how I wanted it we have to um, have to remove those methods and so you can figure that out by yourself okay and then that's basically it now we would 
recompile. So that's uh, step one, of course. But then we also have to uh, update the profiler XML file. So let me open the profiler XML file. So I first need. Uh, um, here we go. So here's the profile XML file. And ideally, you never should have to edit the profile XML file by yourself. In this case, it's a special use case with the software trace, and I haven't like automated it yet. So right now, you have to just go all the way down, and you you will find this thread definition object, and it includes a reference to the iSystem trace variable. So you comment that out, or you just delete that line, and then you go ahead and add the other line here. So you add that, and then it looks like that. And basically, that tells WinIdea, OK, now the instrumentation comes via the DB push message from register 10. And of course, the register 10 here and the register 10 here, they have to match. If you use another register here, of course, you have to update that value too. OK, so now you would just go back to WinIdea, um, reload the, the profile XML by doing a download or load symbols. And then that's basically it. it can go ahead and start a trace recording. And in case of the software trace, WinIdea should actually be able to configure that automatically. So there's no need for manual hardware trace configuration. All right, that, that was fairly easy. So we just had to make some adjustments. So a last comment, if you re-execute, so why would you want to re-execute Itchy? So if you change, if you add or remove tasks or ISRs, then this, if you scroll up here, this thread ID mapping will change. So in that case, this mapping here will be updated by Ipchi. So if you if you make changes to the tasks in ISRs, if you add or remove them, then you have to regenerate the profiler XML, in which case Ipchi will also override this threads definition object. If you're using data trace, then that's fine. That's not an issue. You just update the profiler XML, you recompile, and you're fine. If you're using software trace, you are unfortunately at this point you have to manually um make that change here maybe i'm going to include that into itchy at some point in the future so that is automatically done uh, the right way but right now still have to do it manually so be be aware of that if you're if you're re regenerating uh, re and you don't not getting um like when idea does not show anything because uh, it's looking for the i system trace variable then that's uh, where you have to look for okay all right, let's go back to the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, so that was easy. And now let's take a look at the runnables. So in order to record runnables, we use the so-called virtual function bus trace hooks. So this is a feature that is uh, specified in Autosa. And so what the RTE allows you to do is you can generate hooks for RTE objects of interest. And runnables are RTE objects. So as you can see here on the screenshot, we can enable virtual function bus tracing, and then we can add the return and the start hook for all the runnables that we're interested in. So let's see how that looks like in DaVinci Configurator. Uh, where's my configurator? Here it is. And so you go to that same menu, runtime system general, under runtime system, runtime system general, and then we have virtual function bus tracing. You enable the virtual function bus tracing, and then you can use this assistant to uh, include hooks. And it reads those hooks from the RTE hook.h file. And that file can already memorize that pass because we will need that pass in a second. Basically, here it then shows us which hooks are part um, of that file. And then we, for each of the runnables that we're interested in, we need to include both the start and the return hook. That's important. Otherwise, you know, you will miss the start or the return, which would be a problem. And in my case, I have already done that. And you can see I have a couple of hooks here for the different cores. And then after doing that, 
Now we want to regenerate the OS and the RTE. So make sure that you regenerate those two. And then again, I won't do that, I won't show that for time reasons, but then we can close our configurator. And now the next step is we have to implement those hooks. And luckily, it can help you us with the hook implementation. So to do that, we go back to the JSON file and to the configuration file. Now we can um, we can open the runnable instrumentation part. And there are two things we have to do. So if you created an empty default configuration, you will already have all this object. And regular expression, just leave that as it is for now. Trace variable, please just use iSystem trace runnable. If you change it, make sure that you adapt it in the instrumentation file. Template file we will talk about in a second, but first there are two files here that we have to that are essential. First, RTE hook.h. This file is part of generate data directory, and it will actually get regenerated if we re if we generate the RTE. And this file is necessary because it tells Itchy which hooks are currently active, and then Itchy will create the instrumentation for those hooks. So this is important, just um, specify the absolute or relative path uh, to that directory. If you do the relative path, it has to be relative to the itchy.json file itself. And then I system virtual function bus hooks.c, that's the actual implementation of the runnables that itchy generates, okay? So we will look at how this file looks like in a second, and then, Finally, the, the, let's talk about the template file. So by default, Itchy uses templates or Itchy uses templates in the background to create the instrumentation. If we want to adapt the instrumentation file, we can use do so by specifying a uh, instrumentation file here. So let's, for example, uh, runnable hooks.c and, and make sure that this file does not yet exist. And if it, this file does not yet exist, then what Itchy will do is it will generate that file for us, and then we can adapt it in order to also adapt our instrumentation. Okay, so it's not that complicated. Just specify a file where you implement the instrumentation, and this file then has to be added to the build process. Map RTE hook H to the RTE hook H file and then specify a non-existing template file. And we, we will see why we do that in a second, okay? So now let's go back to our terminal and let's execute runnable instrumentation. And the nice thing about it is you will notice we are still using the same profile XML file if I don't re-specify the task state instrumentation flag, it she will actually leave that part of the profile XML alone. So we could do, we could add um, the other flag here like that, um, task state instrumentation. But since we didn't make any changes, we can we can just leave it as it is. Uh, and there was no need to execute it a second time. Uh, but let's go to the directory. And you can see that now we have a runnable hooks file here. And let's first look into the file that has been generated. So if we go to vector application, gen data, and then I think it's called iSystem. Uh, what name? Let's see here. I have to check how it was called, I forgot. Application gen data RTE hook.i system. Uh, so let's see if I can find this file. RTE hook i system, here we are. So that's the file we just generated. And as you can see, it includes the information for all the 
runnables. For all the runnable hooks that we have seen, and for the runnable return hook, it uses a zero, and for the runnable start hooks, it uses an ID. And then it merges that, like it, um, it ors that with the current core ID. So this is how we get the core ID for uh, on the Oryx. So if you, for example, don't want to allocate the iSystem trace runnable variable into that memory and address, or if you are just using a single core system. So this is actually not a slash that is that is a, a um, like a column, not, like what is the name for the operator? Like a like a straight line, basically a vertical line. Forgot the forgot the uh, English term for that, but um, yeah, this is not a slash. This is a an exclusive or. Um, that's how the programmer would call it, right? Uh, make, make, make sense. Uh, of course, we. Uh, this is how a divide would look like. So if you don't need the core ID, what you can do is uh, you can go ahead and adapt uh, the hook file. And as you can see, this is exactly here. This is our core, so we can remove that. And then uh, we could also uh, remove uh, the compiler macro here, for example, or if we want to use, let's say, if we want to use Rennes as software trace, then we could go here and say, okay, um, let's have um, iSystem I profile runnable, and then we need to use a different register, and then we could um, use right. Use that hook ID, okay? So I hope this wasn't too fast and confusing, but there are two options here. So we can either we use data trace and we can adapt the uh, macro to match our data trace instrumentation, or if we use Renis' software trace, then we add another function here. In this case, then we call it iSystem Profile Runnable. And um, for iSystem Profile Runnable, we then use a different register, so DB uh, push 11. In this case, just have to make sure that it's not the same as uh, as before that as the one that we use for the threads, and we add that here to the to the um, hook definition. Okay, and now if we rerun the runnable instrumentation generation, this file we will we note that this file has changed, and then. We see all the changes that we expect. The compiler macro is no longer there. Um, here we either use iSystem trace runnable if we have data trace or the software trace. And here's the definition of our iSystem profile runnable function. Okay, so this is the first step. Now we would uh, add that uh, our TE hook iSystem to the build process. We would recompile and then eventually go back to win idea. Do a load system if we don't if we have our in this case I have already added the profile XML. Do a load the symbols here or download to reload the profile XML. And now if I go to the trace configuration profiler, I should now have a second section here, and um, it says a system trace runnable. And now as you could see here because I played around with the instrumentation before and I didn't actually regenerate the profile XML. That's not what I want here. So I have to go ahead and um, actually also run the task state instrumentation again so that my profile XML is uh, like that, that part is also overwritten. So now if I take a look at the profile XML, Okay, we can see the runnables here, and we can see the signaling for iSystem trace uh, for the threads. So if we want to switch that to software trace, then um, for both objects here, which to show it one more time, uh, db push pen signaling, nice. Would add that here, and then here, we would do the same for 11. Okay. So now I delete this, of course, because I'm not using software trace, I'm using data trace. So let's get rid of those two guys. Oopsie, daisy. Dumb. Remove that. All right. Let's go back to win idea.
And now we have reinitialized the file. So now if we go to threads and runnable, we can see the actual variables that I'm expecting. And I can also see the runnables that are part of my um, RTE hook, uh, of my virtual function bus trace hook configuration. And now the only thing I have to do is I have to make sure that my system trace runnable variables also recorded. Luckily, those variables are directly behind each other in memory. So I just do a memory range from my system trace to my system trace runnable. And then with that, if I start a recording, I can still see my threads here. And then if I minimize that, I don't see my runnables. Uh, that's not good. Let's see if my system trace runnable variable changes. Yes, it does. So let's see what's going on here. Ah, I actually know the issue. So that's, uh, I do that wrong every time. So while hide areas with no activities is selected. Okay, uh, apparently, let's stop this here. Ah, okay. So if I use, sorry about that. So if I use um, that kind of instrumentation, so if I use a uh, instrumentation for the threads and then for the profile XML configuration that I'm using, Vinadia will actually show the runnables here under the code area. Um, that's for historic reasons. That's just how it is. So um, it's, it's funny because if you use program flow for tracing the runnables, it will show up here under data areas. If you use instrumentation for the runnables, it shows he up here in the code area. Okay, so this is where my runnables are. And again, each of the cores is profiled separately. So you can see that there are runnables active at the same time. But of course, in the background, Vinadia keeps track of the of the cores. Unfortunately, there is no nice way um, to only show the runnables for one core. Um, again, this is just how it is currently in WinIdea. Um, but nevertheless, if you go down here to the statistics, and uh, if you include the runnable statistics here, those will be correct and as expected. And we can also export a BTF trace, and that BTF trace is already um, that BTF trace export is already uh, configured. And uh, so that. The profile XML file already includes the information about the uh, about the BTF trace export. And now this took a little while here. So it seems to be a relatively big file, even the sublime is having a hard time opening the file. But yeah, we can we have all the tasks and all the runnables uh, in this in this file now. Okay. So uh, this is the BTF export, and you can use that to import it into, into third-party timing tools, timing analysis tools. All right. And that's what I wanted to show for the runnables. Again, if you want to use RG50 software trace, then you have to make sure that the trace register, like that the trace messages or the data values are written into um, I sent off chip via DB push. Um, so I've shown how to do that, and we have to adapt the profile XML, and then the rest of the configuration stays the same, basically. All right, so those are the two major use cases. And then let's have a little look at the conclusion. Instrumentation allows hardware based profiling for microcontrollers with less powerful trace capabilities. Okay, that should make sense. It's a good compromise between pure software trace and pure hardware tracing, right? So we add a little bit of instrumentation, but the instrumentation is way more efficient compared to if we were doing a full software trace that does everything in instrumentation. And then just one disclaimer that I want to mention at the, at the end, even if we use instrumentation 
and which is more efficient. We might run into cases where our trace interface is the bottleneck. For example, I have a customer that uses RJ50 software trace. Um, no, that's a lie. That uses um, w DWT data watch trace on the S32K over this uh, serial wire trace output. And if they include all of their runnables or many of them, let's say like 150 runnables, their serial wire trace interface will still overrun. So what they have to do is they can maybe record 20 to 30 runnables plus the threads and then it works fine. And then if they add more runnables than that, the trace interface overruns. So it is way less stressful for the trace interface than a pure hardware-based trace without any instrumentation, but overflows can still happen. So just that you're prepared for that. And then, so now we have uh, time for questions. So I give I give back to our presenter and uh, I'm looking forward to, to answering your questions now. Okay, thank you, Felix. Um, just see. Um, there were no questions. <laughs> Uh, so uh, maybe maybe one hint uh, you you were looking for a for a exclusive or I think it was bitwise or that you were looking for. Uh, oh yeah yeah I was struggling oh, yeah 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 it's bitwise you're right <laughs> uh, not an exclusive one yeah okay Thank so thanks for the presentation very complex uh, topic. Um, I think also very fast, so uh, thanks God we are recording this webinar. And um, so uh, maybe one question from my side, the Itchy tool, um, you are uh, one of these guys who uh, implemented it. <laughs> and um, this Itchy tool is now uh, part of WinIdea, right? The distribution and um, correct? Yeah, yeah, I think it's, I'm I'm not completely sure it it should be because like I had a meeting this week actually and the customer said it's not part yet but okay. it, if it's not part of the current release it definitely should be in the one that is like we we have like new monthly releases now and in the next one it should definitely part, be part of that release hopefully if not we uh, uh, our customers can also contact you or just use webinar at isystem.com if you are interested to getting that. Um, so I think um, we leave it as it is for today. So we had two webinars about Vector Microsar last week, uh, non-intrusive, non-instrumented, today instrumented. Both uh, will be uploaded to the webinar channel soon. And uh, I think uh, people can go through it again, maybe also with you and our assist other systems engineers if need is, uh, if help is needed. So uh, thank you very much for attending and hope to see you maybe next week at uh, our virtual conference next Tuesday. Uh, more information you can find on our homepage uh, on the event calendar. Thank you, Felix, and thank you all and see you next time. Bye-bye. All right, thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.